This is a quick start video for the DC power monitoring module. It measures DC voltage, current, power, and energy consumption. Has four channels to measure four different power supplies at the same time. They must have a common ground. It measures voltage from 0 to 32 volt and current from 0 to 5 amps. The module features SD card data logging and real-time clock for timestamps. This module has two major applications. One, measuring system energy consumption for battery selection. Two, real-time DC power monitoring for safety critical applications. If you're doing any of these applications, then this module is a must have. The module can be purchased on its own or with an extension board to use external wires, RS485 circuit, and connect it to PC application via a micro USB cable. Now, let's do a quick demo on how to use the module. If you buy the module with an extension board, you will get a hardware like this. The first thing to do is to plug in a coin battery for the real-time clock. We use the CR1220. If you don't have one, that's fine, you can still run the module. Then we will plug in an SD card for data logging. We suggest at least 16 gigabytes to log an entire year worth of data. Now, let me show you how to wire up the measurement channels. We have a 24 volt power supply connected to some test load. The wiring is very simple. We connect the power supply positive to the channel and pin using a tool or this tweezer. If you don't have one, we sell this tweezer. It's very cheap on our website. You insert the tweezer tip into the connector spring latch release pin and we insert the wire. The wire is now secure in place. And then we need to connect the power supply ground to the common ground rail at the bottom of the board. Again, we use the tweezer to release the connector spring latch and we insert the wire. Now, let's connect the load. We connect the positive of the load to the channel out and a common ground. My load is a pump controller that I want to measure its power consumption. So the load is connected to the channel out. So we connect the red wire to the channel out using the tweezer. We release the spring latch and we insert the wire. And now we'll connect the ground in a very similar way, so we insert the tweezer in the uh, spring latch release pin and we insert the wire. So that's how to wire up a measurement channel. Now you can turn on your power supply and the load should work. And finally, we will connect a micro USB cable to power up the module and connect it to PC. On PC side, you need to download the PC application from our website. Go to the product page, scroll down to resources software section and download the PC app. Install it and open it. I've already downloaded one at mine, so I'm going to open it. The application looks like this. Select the right COM port. Mine is COM27. You can simply find out which COM port is our module by disconnecting and reconnecting. See which COM port appears. Now, leave everything to the default. Board rate is 115200, slave address is 8. Now press the connect button. You can see the device is connected successfully and it started reading data from the module. We can also see the SD card status is green and detected. The clock, however, is not correct. Um, let's start by adjusting the clock. This is important for SD card data logging timestamps. So go to holding registers tab and um, set hours to 14, minutes to 45 or whatever clock you have right now. So we're setting the clock registers one by one, hour, minute, seconds, and then day, month and year um, and when we're done with that we set set clock to true and this will uh, enforce clock update 
So the time now is updated and is ticking. Now let's watch our channel power consumption data. For that navigate to input registers tab. This will show you the channel real time data numerically. We can see it's showing voltage, current, power, day energy, total energy, minimum and maximum voltage of the day. To see the data graphically, navigate to dashboard tab. We can see voltage, current, power, day energy and total energy all represented graphically. Now, let me run the motor to increase current consumption. Uh, so I turned on the motor and we can clearly see that current consumption went up. So as power and energy rate should also increase. To view the seven days voltage and energy history, go to history tab. If you leave the device running for full days, data will show up in the bar charts. I run mine for two days. So I can see I have voltage and uh, energy history for two days, two days ago and a day ago. So I can see I have minimum and maximum voltages. I have energy two days ago and uh, energy consumption yesterday. You can also update the device firmware through the firmware update tab whenever we make new firmware releases. To enable SD card logging, go to holding registers, enable logging for the channels you want. Scroll down and, we, and take a look at uh, data logging enabled for the different channels. Channel 1 is enabled at mine, the other channels are disabled. If you need to enable it, select the channel 1 data log enabled, set it to true and write, and this will enable channel 1. And we can also change the data logging sampling period. I'll set that to every two seconds. Now let's head back to dashboard. We will run the system for a few seconds with different load conditions to log into SD card. So we want to allow the data logging, SD card data logging to gather a few points. Um, now let's take the SD card out and plug it to PC with an SD reader. I just plugged in mine. And there is the main dpower directory that is created by the module. Open it and we can see four different channels, a directory for each channel. Let's navigate to channel one and I can see folders for different months. I'll open July and I can see the log for today. Let's open the CSV file. And here's the one we can do all sorts of things with this data like uh, plot them graphically on Excel or just to study them. So that was a quick start demo for the T-Power module. Now let me show you how you can buy the DC power monitoring module. Navigate to our website mutexembedded.com, go to the product page, scroll down. Here you will see all attachments and resources. We will explain more about the I2C and Modbus drivers in the next video where we will demonstrate how to connect this module to any microcontroller. Now scroll up and click on buy from distributor button. This will take you to our distributor website currently through Tindy. You can simply add to cart. You can also buy the extension board in the same way. Um, you can also add the connector tool the pointed tweezer if you don't have one. It's only $2. Then add all you need to cart and simply buy. And on the cart, you can select your country and you will get in the estimated shipping cost. We use Aramex for shipping. It's very fast and reliable and affordable too.